Hey guys, so I recently recorded a whole bunch of samples of a glockenspiel at my at my parents' house, and uh, I decided to assemble that into a sampler instrument. And today I want to show you uh, how you can do the same thing. Uh, as an added bonus, uh, you can download this glockenspiel sampler for the low, low price of $1, which is basically nothing, like a third of a cup of coffee or something. Um, but yeah, I'm also going to show you how to do this yourself. Um, uh, so you can see that I've sampled all of the uh, all of the notes of the glockenspiel multiple times. So you have like some hard hits, some softer hits, and some softer hits still. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm going to show you uh, how you can do the same with your own recordings. Um, so the first step, obviously, is to prepare all of these samples. Um, I decided to record every note on the glockenspiel three times, hitting it hard, hitting it kind of soft, and hitting it super soft. Um, so yeah, then you can just drag that into a sampler instrument, uh, but then we have to kind of set it up in such a way that it plays the correct sample under the right conditions. Um, so you do that with this zone tab over here, you click this to expand this, and you get a whole list of all of the samples you've imported. Um, and then you have to go about setting up these ranges. So these ranges basically specify um, which sample is triggered under which condition. Uh, so uh, I have about one and a half octaves uh, worth of notes that I recorded from the glockenspiel because it was a really small, cheap thing. Um, but um, you know, I want to be able to play every note chromatically there is. So I started with the lowest note and uh, I set up this range from all the way down to the super duper lowest mini notes possible to uh, just above that C sharp. All right, then for the next note D, I set D to D sharp. For the next note E, I just did the E because then the next note will be F. Uh, and then I set the range to F sharp and so on and so forth. I basically made sure that uh, with these samples, uh, every the, the entire range of the keyboard uh, is covered. Um, one thing I decided to do here is I decided to extend it way down into ranges so low you wouldn't find that on an actual glockenspiel, but I decided to include that because that super low range can actually have some really cool results. If I play like a, a sound like way down here on the keyboard, sounds super freaky. Um, so I decided to leave that in for that reason. Uh, it's part of the fun, I think. Uh, but yeah, once you have all of those ranges set up correctly, you still have to uh, tell Ableton the root note of each uh, sample. Otherwise, it won't know how far to pitch it around to get to the correct value. Um, so that's what these little R's here indicate. You can see there's an R on all of these samples. Uh, and you can change that by selecting the sample and then going into this root thing. And you can see if I move that, then up there the uh, R moves around. Uh, so I just set it up in such a way I labeled all my samples. You know, this is uh, C in the fifth octave. I set it up to the C5, D5, E5, F5, and so on and so forth. Um, so once you have that done, Ableton will play uh, the right sample for the right key tuned in the right way. Um, but we still have these different velocity layers. Uh, and that's where we can go to the next tab. Uh, and you can see, uh, luckily, all of these hard hits are grouped together, all the medium hits are grouped together, and the soft hits are grouped together. Um, and very similar to this key stuff, I, I set up velocity ranges here. So these numbers represent different velocities. So you can see if I play a really loud note, you can see it goes all the way up here. But if I press the key very gently, we get, we get a marker all the way down here, right? Um, so yeah, this is very similar to the key stuff. It just selects which sample to use um, based on how hard you press the key. Uh, one interesting thing you can see here is that these ranges overlap a little bit. And there's this weird thing going on with the bars on the top. They're not the same length as the actual bars. You can change it like that. But um, the reason that's different is because this Basically what this is doing is this entire range where they overlap um, is a crossfade between the medium samples and the soft samples. And similarly here we have a crossfade between the medium and the hard hits. 
Um, the reason uh, I decided to do this uh, was to get a little more of a natural transition between lower velocities and higher velocities, because it, it becomes really apparent that there's only a few samples per note if you play the same note multiple times, but you help that problem a lot if you set up this crossfading range. Uh, now this crossfading doesn't always work out nice. Um, the thing with a glockenspiel is that uh, the attack can be quite percussive. Um, so if you don't get the transients to line up perfectly, it can sound a little bit off, it can get out of phase with itself, and then you can get all sorts of messy problems. Um, but with these, I made sure with these samples, I made sure to really go in and really um, make sure the sample starts right at the transient. Um, so we don't have that issue here, luckily. But if you find that your recorded samples do have that issue, uh, then you can just you know prevent that by making sure the ranges don't overlap. So you would just like do something like this, and then like this. All right, so um, that's pretty much it. But you might have noticed that aside from this key and velocity tab, there's one more tab over here, and that is the selector tab. Now I haven't done anything with this. I just left it as it is. Uh, as it is. Um, and the reason is that this is something that you would want to use for an instrument where, uh, say, you have different types of playing on the same instrument. For example, um, you can pluck the strings of a violin, but you can also play them normally. Uh, so you can use this in much the same way. You would just set up ranges for, you know, your plucking and your regular playing, and maybe you have some other kind of playing, so you can just do that. Um, yeah, you can set up ranges very similarly, and then you can use automation to change between the different expressions. Um, or you can even uh, link this up to a MIDI controller, uh, edit MIDI map like that. Um, but yeah, obviously to the glockenspiel that doesn't really apply. Um, but you know, depending on what you're sampling, that could make total sense to make use of that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it how I made this sampler. Uh, it sounds great with a touch of reverb. Um, again, links in the description to download this thing. Uh, and also a link to my Discord server. That's not my Discord server. This is my Discord server. Look at that. People posting free shit and talking about production. Cool stuff. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.